Hey everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, coming at you with a video today where Ravensburger has finally made organized play announcements. But first, before we get started, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner. I do appreciate it. I do put out regular content about the hobbies that I love the most, with this channel being dedicated to the card games that I play. Now, you heard me right. Ravensburger has finally announced their organized play schedule, as well as some some additional important dates revolving set releases and new product releases. We're going to be breaking down the official announcement and then I'm going to kind of be going through what you can expect to see, what I think we may see, and what I hope we do see with these announcements. I just want to say that I am super excited. This was kind of the last piece of the puzzle for me in the Lorconic gameplay. The artwork has been fantastic. Big fan of the system that they've come out with and gameplay they've come out with. The organized play piece was really the missing piece of the puzzle that now kind of brings everything together. And the initial announcement has got me very, very excited to say the least. The first big announcement that we have is the store championships that are going to be coming out in April of this year, starting shortly after the release of Into the Inklands. This is going to be a tournament format held at your local game shops where they will have unique prizing for those events with the first event prizing already revealed being this enchanted Rockstar Stitch and the top two players getting the Rockstar Stitch champion playmat as well. Now this is an awesome thing for Ravensburger to do to help support the local card shops that are supporting their games. So far we've had the league kits which were an initial success but unfortunately it left the shops in kind of a situation where they had to create some additional value to get players to come in consistently because committing to a league play every week especially with multiple stores in your area hosting events it really just became very hard for players to support multiple stores realistically because that's a lot of time commitment for cards that weren't particularly rare so if they wanted them they could just hop online spend a couple bucks and purchase those so unfortunately i don't think it brought the crowds in to the stores like they were hoping to the store championships though should do that these cards will be very highly sought after as well as the mats which helps keep that local community going very strong now the second announcement actually involves their global organized play path which is actually going to launch this coming may it's going to be a series of regionals in which the top players will qualify for the nationals invite that is going to be held early 2025 now we don't know the exact formats dates times any of the event information other than they said that there will be multiple ways to qualify for the nationals invites which i think probably means that you'll be able to qualify through like standard constructed play they'll probably have some limited formats that pop up here and there that have qualifiers as well they did say that the top four players for each of those events will qualify for a nationals invite but they have not announced any locations or exact dates outside of the may deadline that they've announced now, while they have not confirmed it, I would go and venture that they will have unique promos for these regional events as well, similar to the store championship events, probably play mats, sleeves, etc. that are going to be unique to those events as well. So be on the lookout for more announcements about those specific details coming soon. In addition to those big announcements, they did announce that there is going to be a new beginner kit that is going to be coming out. Uh, very much like a, a trainer kind of deck building tool that they're going to be sending out for very, very early into TCG players basically like a 30 card deck that this tutorial guide is going to kind of walk you through building up to eventually a 60 card completed deck to really bring people who are from outside tcgs all together into a environment where they can learn to play kind of at their speed doesn't sound like it's going to be like a universal product by any means that you're going to need to rush out and get but it may be a product that we see replace the regular starter deck releases for a time if that's going to be something that they continue doing going forward or if they're going to use that starter deck kind of shelf space to promote entry into the game and then just move to more 
traditional product past that. They haven't made any announcement that they're discontinuing starter decks. I could just see these kind of taking the place of starter decks going forward to kind of bridge that gap into a more constructed play environment. In addition to all that, they have confirmed the release dates for all chapter releases for this coming year. Not a ton of new information on here other than those release dates. We don't have any themes or anything along those lines. No artwork that was shared. Just some dates here. So those dates are going to be for Into the Inklands, which we knew already. We have February 23rd at your local game stores, March 8th at your mass market uh, named to be announced is the fourth set going to be released May 17th at local game shops. That kind of coincides with the kickoff of their regional organized play. May 31st, the mass market retail for release for that one. The set five going to be released August 9th at local game stores, August 23rd at Mass Retail and Shop Disney. This one here is going to be lining up very close with Gen Con again this year. So I do think we may even get like a pre-pre-release similar to the set one release uh, with Gen Con this year, which will be on July 31st and run through August 3rd which is nice here locally, a very close convention, a very big convention, one that I hope to attend this year as well. And then finally, last set date released for November 15th at local game shops and November 29th at mass market. Uh, so similar release schedule to what we saw the first year of Disney with that August, November release. We may even get a seasonal set that's thrown in there. If you're not familiar with that expression, it's something that a lot of these card games will do. They'll add an extra like smaller print run bonus set kind of into the rotation so that there's actually a fifth set released in the year. Print runs on those sets are usually limited. There's usually some pretty big cards in there to pull uh, people into making purchases on them. If you're familiar with like Pokemon or the One Piece card game, we just had a set five for the One Piece card game that had a whole lot of extra hits that were added into the set. Uh, sets like Champion's Path or the new Pokemon 151 are similar products, those Hidden Fates, etc. if you're familiar with the Pokemon. So if you're familiar with those kind of concepts of those added sets into the rotation, we could see one of those. It's not listed on the release, but I would also not be surprised if we see something similar to that from Ravensburger, if not this year, coming in future years with those releases. Now, as far as what I want to see out of all this organized play, now I know a lot of people in this card game, this is their very first card game. And when you hear terms like organized play, I understand it can make you a little squeamish. And I wanna let you guys know that this is not something to be scared of. They're gonna keep supporting the more casual gamers and collectors. They've already made it very clear that they want this to be a very accessible game, even for those people who aren't competitive. This is just going to be adding another layer to the game for those players that want a more competitive environment. Now you can either take this opportunity and develop your game style and become a better player if that's what you're into to compete for these better prizes, or you can ignore it entirely and still enjoy the league play and the more casual setup that they are setting up for these stores to be hosting. All that to say, this is a good thing for the health of the game. And if you like the Lorcana game on any level, a good organized play system is going to help it stay around for a long time. Now with organized play, it's great that they've made the announcement and it looks like the announcement has a lot of the boxes checked for what I want to see going forward. But there are still some pitfalls that we could run into that we're seeing in some of the other games that are out there that could make the organized play just a huge flop. So one thing they have not announced so far that a lot of other card games will do are event packs. Now these are really good incentives for more casual players to go into more competitive environments because they reward everybody kind of for participation. They are limited to the seasons in which they are produced, so there is a rotation to them. So it creates this sense of urgency to participate even if you don't feel like you have that chance to win it all. So if these store championships release and the only prizing that these stores can give out are for the top 
first and second place winners of those tournaments. That's going to create an environment where people who don't see themselves as highly competitive are probably going to shy away from these events. Conversely, if they have these event packs where they go into these tournaments, they get these packs just for entry, participating, they're unique to that event, they're collectible to that event, and no matter what the results of the final tournament are, they walk away with something that is unique to that experience. That is a huge plus for that middle ground of players. Even the highly competitive players, if there's a huge tournament and the, it is extremely top loaded, a lot of times they'll shy away from it as well because even in top level play, there does require a little bit of luck to get into those top two spots. Skill is obviously going to be a big factor, but if you have 100 people at an event and the only the top two places are gonna be paying out for that event, even the more competitive people in those events are going to kind of shy away from those, investing their entire day into something where if they hit third place, which is super strong performance, they're not going to walk away with anything. So I do hope they have something in mind, something that makes the experience memorable for all levels of player, not just the winner cards at the first and second place. My next concern is actually going to be for the regional size events that they are planning to host with the overall size and accessibility of those events. Now, depending on what your TCG experience is, is gonna kinda depend on where you sit at in regards to these regional type events. Games like Magic the Gathering have a ton of regional qualifying events for a ton of players. So you have a lot of opportunity to get in, get to these events, go and qualify if that's what you want. Conversely, games like the One Piece card game have fewer of these regionals, and these regionals are all capped and currently capped well below the demand for these regional events. So even getting into one of these regionals becomes almost a battle of wits and skill just to get into the event before you've ever even played your first game. Now, what I do like that One Piece has done is similar to what we were talking about with the store championships they've made those regional events unique experiences having regional exclusive promos for everybody who enters having regional exclusive winning promos for people who top into top either 32 16 etc and then those winner promos at the very very top for just that unique experience all the way around now they did open up their nationals this year to basically anybody but if you did win in one of the regional events you did get an automatic seat at that table and didn't have to go through all the hustle and bustle of trying to get one of those tickets before they sold out so what i'd like to see lorcana is to make sure that these regional events are plentiful that they are out there that they are easily accessible if that means opening them up to maybe smaller stores than other card games have opened them up to so that people have a chance to participate without traveling across the country without having to sit in front of their computer screen hitting refresh a thousand times waiting for that timer to go off and trying to race to get that ticket into their cart before they sell out it's just not something that leaves a good taste in players' mouths, but I would like to see it again, similar to those store championships, those unique prizes for those regional events that are ultimately going to lead a lot of players to that national stage. Now, I would love to hear what you guys think about today's announcement from Robinsberger down in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, Hobby Hero, out.